In your published works, you talk about something that's conspicuously missing from this debate, the relation between reason and faith. For example, in Reasonable Faith, you point out that when faith is in conflict with the evidence and argument, it's the latter rather than the former that should be disregarded. How do you, and since it was a normative claim, all other Christians escape this downward spiral of radical skepticism? Um, in tonight's debate, I took the word faith to mean the same thing as believe. So faith in God, believe in God, that is they believe that God exists. But you're quite right in saying there's another understanding of faith that is more than just propositional belief. It would be the idea of trusting in someone, committing one's life to someone. And I would say that that kind of faith would be subsequent to propositional belief. You first believe that God exists, and then you can believe in God and put your faith in him. Now, in the chapter that you were speaking of in Reasonable Faith, when I'm speaking of faith there, I am talking about um, how do we know the uh, propositional truths of the Christian faith, like that God exists or that God loves me and so forth. And what I was suggesting there is that in addition to external arguments and evidence, there is also this immediate testimony of God himself to one that gives you in a properly basic way a knowledge of uh, God's existence and, and the great truths of the gospel. That was my eighth point in tonight's debate, that God can be personally known and experienced. And I said, this isn't an argument. Rather, it's suggesting that just as we have properly basic beliefs like the belief in the reality of the external world or um, the reality of the past, so belief in God could be a properly basic belief grounded in the inner witness of the Holy Spirit. So this isn't some kind of fideism or leap in the dark sort of thing. It's saying that God himself can give a person a knowledge of his existence that is independent of argument and evidence. And this is a view that's widely defended today, especially by Alvin Plantinga in his book, Warranted Christian Belief. And I think he's shown that there aren't any philosophical objections to this point of view. It, uh, it, it's a perfectly coherent religious epistemology.